Hello, hello, hello. Welcome back, guys. Today we're talking about Photoshop. Photoshop CC 2015. That's Photoshop CC 2015. What is up, guys? Max here, and welcome back to another tutorial. And now, in today's tutorial will be covering a cool little pre composition technique inside of Photoshop. So, today at work, I had a good coworker of mine. Shout out to Eva. Yeah, that's right. Um, she asked me, Max, how do you put a screen inside of an iPhone? you know, flat image inside of Photoshop. I know you do it a lot in like After Effects and Premiere, but how would you do it inside of Photoshop? So basically what she was asking, she has some visual design mockups of an application we're working on, pretty cool stuff, and she wants to put the mockup inside the phone for, you know, preview purposes. Um, so I was like, sure thing, really easy to do actually. So what I did was I downloaded this image off of the internet, just, you know, I Googled a iPhone 6 image and what we're gonna do is we're gonna open up that image inside of Photoshop. So, I've already got Photoshop open and I'm using Photoshop CC 2015. Let me exit out of these things because we don't need them. We're gonna go to new. Actually, we'll just drag it into Photoshop. We'll just take this image and drag it right into Photoshop which will create a composition for us. Um, the width of the thing, cool. So what we're gonna do to put a screen inside of this and make it look like it's actually in the phone. There's a couple different ways to do this. Number one, if you already have your visual design mockups, you could drag it into your composition, which will do that method first, because I'm assuming that's what you already have. Um, or we can just start from scratch. So iPhone 6 screenshot, and I am just Googling this as we speak. Let me drag the uh, Google Chrome over so you can see iPhone 6 screenshot, hit enter, images, and this looks about right. Let's see if we can get like a larger resolution, 750 by 13 something. Works for me, we'll use this. Save image as, right to the desktop, and I am gonna drag this right over for us to finagle, boom. So here it is in my finder window, drag it in, right there cool next step because let's go ahead and rasterize this when you drag it in it is a smart object and what a smart object is is basically a pre-composition so what I'll do is I'll rasterize this just to show you how to create a smart object if you're not already using one what you do is you right click and convert to smart object and when you do the smart object you can double click this little link right here and it jumps into the screen so when you set file, save, if you change it, it is a .psb file, which basically is a pre-composition file for Photoshop. So we'll keep this open, jump back over to our other composition, and do a little work. So what we're going to do is going to go to Edit, Perspective Warp, and we'll drag a box around our image while we have this layer selected. Then once our box is dragged, it's kind of corner to corner, we click Warp. And now what we'll do is we will drag the corners of this composition onto the iPhone to give it a perspective warp. And boom, pretty much just like that, it is near finished. So just line it up accordingly. You can zoom in a lot to do this. Kind of give it a little leeway. So command plus to zoom. Let's see, move up a little bit. Let's move this little edge over a little bit. Stretch this side out. And it takes a little, you know, tweaking to get it perfect. But, you know, because my perspective warp wasn't aligned exactly perfect. But this is looking pretty good. I mean, I'm pretty happy with this. Look at there. And then click check. Now what this does is something pretty cool. So what you can do, the perspective warp is just a smart filter that has been applied because it's a uh, smart object. You double click into this and this would be like your image. So if I went like this and typed text like, you know, max onto the phone and then I click save on my PSB file, jump back over here, it is now on the phone really really simple and we can add a couple of things to this to make it look a little cooler what we'll do is go to layer 
layer style, excuse me, click the layer, then go to layer, layer style, inner glow. Drag over the, the box over here. And what we're gonna do is go to blend mode on the inner glow. Actually, let's make it a little bigger so you can see it. You can see this glow on the inside edge. Change it to normal, then change the inner glow to a really dark color. And take the opacity down some. Actually, let's bring it up a lot so we can see what we're working with. Bring the size down like that. Bring the opacity down like that. This kind of makes it look like it's sinking in there a little bit. So if we turn the inner glow on and off, you can kind of see it gives a little edge right here. And yeah, so essentially that's how you put a screen into a phone. Um, it works just like that. And if you know the, uh, let's say, the uh, just use the magic wand tool in this layer and get rid of the white. Imagine that I comped out the white perfectly and didn't delete a bunch of the phone. <laughs> Assuming. Um, what you could do, Command D to deselect all this, is you could grab both of these and put it into a folder. You got your you know, iPhone 1. And you could like move it around and stuff. It'll stay linked together. But I'm going to back up and uh, get rid of the... I would obviously cut this out a lot better than I did. Cool. And one more thing to sell the effect. And if you're wondering why Max just instantly disappeared, it's because Photoshop crashed like five times on a Mac Pro with 64 gigs of RAM. So thanks Adobe for that one. We're going to do one more thing to sell this effect. We're going to recreate this little highlight right here. So what we can do real quick like is we can just grab the pen tool, go to a new layer, and I turned off the bottom layer just so we can see. What we'll do is we'll just grab a little pin point right here, pin point right here, stretch this out, click and click. Now we have a shape, change it to white. That's our shape on top. Turn this back on. Take our shape, take the opacity down a bunch, and our glare is back. Just like that. Now feel free to play with the opacity. I take it down to about 10%. Looks pretty good. I would maybe even blur it some, but that's totally up to you. Now, once again, one more little quick tip. You can always make a new file and change it to the resolution of an iPhone, which is four. 1242, yeah, 1242 by 2208, which is the width and the height of an iPhone. Click Enter, New Composition, click Command Delete to change the background color to whatever color I have set here, which is purple, so when we drag it in, we can see. Drag it down and drag in your background, and now you have a shape that is the size of an iPhone. Then you could take your perspective warp, you know, you turn this into a convert smart object, use perspective warp to make it and then you have your PSB file with where you can put your screen elements so that was how to put screens inside of an iPhone in a nutshell in Photoshop I hope it was a pretty quick tip this should be you know, seemingly short video I've been recording for a while kind of messed up here and there but hey we are not perfect in any way and if you're interested feel free to check out one of these four videos top left is my black magic production 4k camera review the top right is how to composite matrix screens into uh, laptops the bottom left is the new saber plugin from video copilot for after effects on how to make this cool like star wars intro kind of thing and the bottom right is my take on using stock music for film and or video so please go check out one of those videos it really does me a huge favor and Hopefully, you might enjoy it. So, as always, guys, I'm Max, and I'll catch you next time. Peace.